Hello, hello. Hi, Chennai. How are you? I'm fine. Are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good to see you again. Good to see uh, you too. It's been a lot. Uh, it's a long time since I. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm been in your class. Yes, so, it has. Happy <laughs> anyway, happy to be here. I'm yeah, I'm glad you're back. I'm glad that you're back. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. And Christoph, how are you today? I'm fine. Good. Winter good, is good. coming. Is it? <laughs> yes, again. <laughs> again, I know, right? Yes. Yeah. We had spring and now it's coming winter again. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, same here. Same here. It's uh, a lot colder today than it has been. So we might even get snow this weekend. So. We'll see. <laughs> so. We have snow tomorrow. Ah, uh, tomorrow, yeah, yeah. So, do you like the snow? Uh, if mm. you don't have to shovel, then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. I'm not. I'm not a big fan. So, um, I'll be happy if it doesn't. But the alternative, then it just rains and rains and rains. So, yeah, so, um, Jane, good to see you back. Hi, teacher. Good to see Hi. you. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep, yep. And, um, Ian, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. And Cecilia, good to see you again. Thank you. Nice to see you, too. Very good. And uh, is it Lucas? Uh, hello, Shanae. How are you? Uh, hello, everybody. Good to see I'm you. I'm very good, and, and I'm glad I joined your class. Yes, awesome. Because there I've is. always been too late. Yeah. <laughs> you made it in. Yes. <laughs> so, good. And Mustafa, good to see you. Thanks. And nice to see you. <laughs> and Sophie Ann, good to see you as well. See you too. Awesome. And uh, hello to everyone who's out in the lobby. <laughs> so, hello, hello. So, um, welcome, guys. Um, we're going to be working on uh, some TOEFL um, reading passages um, today. Um, we're going to be reading. Uh, some short uh, reading passages and answering some questions. Um, I also have um, a uh, paragraph completion exercise and some grammar stuff that we'll go over if we have time. So um, that's what we're going to start with. Um, and for those of you who don't know me, which I'm pretty sure I know everyone, but um, my name is Shanae and I am from the United States. And I am from, I think everybody knows, I, or I live in California. California. So, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, welcome to everyone. Let's just uh, go around the room real quick and uh, have everyone introduce themselves. Um, Cecilia, we'll start with you. I'm from Uruguay, a small country in South America between Argentina and Brazil. And um, Ayan? I'm from Romania. It's a country in uh, Europe, close to Russia. And I want to ask, today is your mother's uh, birthday? My mother's birthday? Yeah. Uh, her birthday was on Sunday. Uh, on Sunday. <laughs> but, <laughs> you, yeah. You told us uh, when uh, her birthday, uh, you'll go to see the baby's doctor. Oh yes, yes. Today yeah. we did. Yeah, today we did go to the doctor. Yeah, this today. Was my <laughs> yeah, t today was. Congratulations for God. Thank you. Little Thank girl. you. I I hope it's a girl. We don't know yet, but um, hopefully it's a girl. So we'll see. We'll be happy with either one, though. So, um, and good. thank you, though. And uh, Jane. Hi everyone. I'm Jane from Brazil. 
<laughs> Good. And um, Christoph? Hello, I'm, I'm Krzysztof. I'm from Silesia. I am programmer and webmaster. Mm -hmm. Wait, where did you say you were from? Silesia. Ah, in Poland. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. And um, Lily. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Liliana from Colombia, South America, and now I'm looking for a job. <laughs> That's all from me. Wonderful. Do you know what you want to do? Uh, yes, but uh, now it's hard to get a a well-paid job. Yeah, I, I hear you. So I'm yes. sis. <laughs> That's good. Well, you can take advantage of Colingo then. Yes, yes, that's why I'm improving my English in Colingo to a uh, uh, better level in English. Excellent. And um, Lucas? Uh, hello, my name is Lukas. I'm from Poland. I'm working as a site uh, civil engineer. Wonderful, wonderful. And Mustafa? Yes. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Mustafa. Uh, it's Claudia and Renik here. Uh, nice to see you. <laughs> Good to see you too. Nice. And Sofiane. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Sofiane. I'm from Algeria and I'm 17 years old. All right, guys. So um, for those of you who are outside, um, the Hangout is full right now. So um, you cannot join. Uh, unfortunately, you're stuck in the lobby. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't um, follow along with us. So um, just hang in there. And in terms of uh, me trying to tell you how to work a webcam or anything like that, I am no help. <laughs> so um, it was hard enough for me to figure it all out. So, um, but if a seat becomes available, uh, you need to have, you don't necessarily need a webcam, but you do need a working microphone. So, and headphones preferably. So if, you, if a seat becomes available, feel free to join. Um, just make sure you have something that works to where you can talk. So, all right, guys. Um, uh, sorry, but I'm here uh, an echo. Yeah, it's coming from Sofiane. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute you, Sofiane. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so, um, all right. So we're going to get started and do some short reading. Um, a lot of these are simply... Um, just one paragraph uh, passages. So we'll just kind of take turns having everyone read a passage and then we'll answer the questions um, together. And I have a lot of these for us to do. So let's see. All right. Okay. Is this big enough, or do you guys want me to make it a little bit bigger? It's big enough. It's big enough? Um, do I have a volunteer who would like to read this passage on rocks for me? Okay, I, I me. Is that Lily? Yes. Okay, all right, go for it, Lily. Okay, uh, rocks. Uh, Okay, uh, making surf surface rocks in the first stage in modern oil, I sorry, oil exploration. By studying the rocks on the surface, geologists can guess at the structure of the rocks beneath the surface. Another method that helps them do this is used to use an instrument called a gravimeter. This measures the slight difference in the gravitational force at different points on the surface of the Earth. The denser rocks have a great gravitational attraction than the lighter rocks in the surface layers. By taking gravimeter readings at a number of places along the surface, it is possible to map the density of the rocks below, thus helping to find oil. Excellent. Very good. So um, let me ask you guys a couple comprehension, comprehension questions first. So what is the first stage in modern oil exploration? Mapping surface. Yeah, mapping surface what? Rocks. Yeah, mapping surface rocks. Ah, yes. Yes. And... Um, 
what are they by when we study rocks on the surface what are we trying to find out well, I is they want to find oil uh, yeah they're wanting to find oil um, but if we look at the rocks on the surface what does that tell us about the rocks beneath the surface the structure of the rocks yeah the structure of the rocks uh, specifically we are density. looking say that again uh, density of rocks yes exactly yeah specifically we're looking at the density of the rocks mm -hmm. and what is the thing that they use to do all this measuring gravimeter a gravimeter mm -hmm. exactly and that measures what and the difference in the gravitational force. Number of places along the surface. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And denser rocks have more or less gravitational. Layer. Uh, greater, greater. More. Yeah, yeah. The denser rocks have, have, a, have greater gravitational uh, attraction than the lighter rocks. Mm -hmm. So let's look at this. So according to the passage, A, the rocks should be cracked first to drill oil. B, the rocks underneath the soil are spotted by the help of a gravimeter. C, by examining the rocks, geologists find the coal. D, Gravimeter is only used in the mountainous places to locate loyal, excuse me, oil reservations. Or E, oil reserves are closely bound up with dead creatures. B. I think it's B, yes. B. Yes, exactly. Good. All right. Rocks uh, A, which have the denser gravitational force, have more oil than the lighter ones. Rocks B can be located by studying structure of the soil. Rock C can be found at different parts of the earth. Rocks D are first studied so as to locate the oil reservations. Or rocks E deal only with the structure of the gravimeter but not the gravitation. C. D. 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 A. Mm, yeah, it's it's either going to be between A and D. What when you come across questions like this in a test, your best bet is to look at the passage and see what exactly the passage tells you and what you are assuming from the passage. And so you're going to want to go with what the passage actually tells you. So, does this passage tell you specifically that rocks are first studied so as to locate the oil reservations? Does it, does it even yeah. mention oil reservations? Yes, last sentence. Um, it is possible to, to find last, oil. Uh -huh. It is possible to map the density of the rocks below, thus helping to find oil. Okay, by taking gravimeter reader readings at a number of places along the surface, it is possible to map the density. Okay, now does this tell you? Does the uh, passage tell you? Rocks which have the denser gravitational force have more oil than the lighter ones. Does it say that in the passage? No. 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 It, what, is, what does it say about denser rocks? About the attraction of denser rocks. Yes, it does say that they have a greater gravitational attraction than the lighter rocks, but that doesn't that doesn't say that they have more oil. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so what do you guys think? D. 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 Mm -hmm. D. You guys think? Okay. Look, D. let's let's look at B. 
can be rocks can be located by studying structure of the soil. No. Do we does this does this passage mention anything about soil? No, 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 it doesn't. All we're talking about is surface rocks and rocks beneath the surface. Mm -hmm. So I would I personally would go with D as well. Um, number three, it could be drawn out of the passage that A, gravimeter readings are denser on the surface, B, oil exploration needs some steps to be taken before drilling, C, to be sure whether it's rocky, geologists use gravitational force, D, the bigger rocks absorb the gravitational force, or E, if it's rocky, there are huge oil reservations underneath the surface. B. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we get that from the very first sentence where it tells us point blank that mapping surface rocks is the first stage in modern oil exploration. So we know that you don't just pick up a drill and start drilling but that you need to take some steps before you drill. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, do I have a volunteer to read this next passage? Can I? Um, who was that? Sophia. Sophia? Yeah, sure, Sophia. Yeah, go for it. We hardly ever notice the mixture of gases that surround us. We only realize it if there is snow, wind, or one fog or small cuts off our view into the distance. Yet we depend on the air in many ways. It provides the oxygen that we breathe, plants on which all animals depend for food. We do not live without the carbon dioxide in the air, and it is a barrier hundreds of, hundreds of miles deep protecting us from the burning ultraviolet rays of the sun. Fast moving pieces of stone called meteoroids. Meteoroids, uh -huh. Me meteoroids, meteoroids, uh -huh. meteoroids are burnt up when they enter the atmosphere from space before they can reach the ground and cosmic rays, which are made up of fragments of atoms traveling from distant parts of space are slowed down before they can do damage. Good, all right. So it is obvious in the passage that we, A, um, nearly are not aware of the combination of gases in nature. B, do not depend on the air due to its complexities. C, are unconscious that there is strong wind around us. D, have no inclinations to learn something more about air, or E, notice the advantages of the mixture of gases. E? A, maybe? A. Yes, yes, it is A, and we get that from the very first sentence. We hardly ever notice the mixture of gases that surround us. Mm hmm yes, good. It is stated in the passage that air, A, provides us with carbon dioxide, B, enables the plants to get enough oxygen to breathe, C, is vital both for human beings and plants, D, makes it difficult to protect us from ultraviolet rays of the sun, or E, has the comic, excuse me, cosmic rays which are made up of fragments of atoms which damage the atmosphere. Is viral both for human beings and plants? See? Mm -hmm. Anybody else have an idea? Everybody agree? I agree. I agree. You agree. Okay. We'll go with C. And meteoroids. A, cannot reach the ground as they are. B, are made of pieces of atoms. C, 
have great power to protect us from cosmic rays. D, damage the ground. Or E, travel from distant parts of space. Can you scroll down? Mm -hmm. So we're going to look right here about meteoroids. Fast moving pieces of stone. They cannot reach us. Cannot reach the ground. Yes. A, cannot reach the ground as they are. Mm -hmm. We know that they're not made of pieces of atoms because it's the cosmic rays that are made of the fragments of atoms. We know that they aren't from distant parts of space because that, again, is the cosmic rays. We know that they don't damage the ground because they can't hit the ground. And the passage does not say anything about meteoroids having great power to protect us from cosmic rays. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? You want to see how you did? Yes. Great. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yes. You got them all right, guys. Good. All right. Let's do another one. And I'll give you guys this uh, website um, at the end of class because they have tons of these things if you're interested. All right. So off of science, because science can be tedious and boring, um, at least for me, um, <laughs> we'll do the difference between men and women. <clears throat> do I have a volunteer to read this passage? Okay, maybe me. Okay, go for it, Christoph. Uh, although there is a great deal of uh, variation within each gender on the average men and women discuss, uh, surprisingly di different range of topic. According to some studies, women and men ranging in age from 17 to 80 described the range of topics each discusses with friends of the same sex. Set, certain topics uh, were common to both men and women. Work, movies, and television pr proved to be frequent topic for both groups. The difference between men and women were more uh, striking that than the similar similarities. Uh, female female friends spent much more time discussing personal and domestic subjects, relationship problems, family health, and reproductive matters, uh, weight, food, and clothing. Men, on the other hand, were more likely to discuss music current events, sport, and business. Women were more likely to gossip about close friends and family. By contrast, men spent more time gossiping about sport, figures, and media personalities. This difference can lead to frustration when men and women try to converse with one another. Good. I can agree. Me neither, me neither. But it's true. Me joining. All right. So it is stated in the passage that women, A, are unwilling to discuss personal subjects, B, are more interested in discussing relationship problems than are men, C, never talk about other men and women. D, don't like gossiping about anything. Or E, discuss more important issues than men. Me. B. 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 Mm -hmm. 
All right. According to the passage, men, A, need to learn to communicate better. B, like talking about movies and television as much as women do. C, are not likely to gossip on anything. D, have no common topics with women. Or E, get frustrated more whenever they try to converse with women. B. B. Yeah, B. The passage mainly discusses a, what women's con uh, excuse me, what women's conversational topics are. B, why men don't like conversing with women. C, the topics men like discussing. D, why women talk more than men. Or E, the conversational topics of men and women. E. Yes. Yay! <laughs> this one was easy, no? Yeah, this one was a lot easier. You'll notice when you take tests that it's always going to be a lot easier to um, for you to answer questions on topics that are interesting to you. Yes. You know, if you if you if you are into science and science is something that you really like, then stuff about science is easy for you to answer. If you're like me and you hate it, <laughs> then it's a lot harder for you to answer um, versus social topics like men and women or movies or, or whatever. So I picked a couple different things for us to, uh, to go over. Um, all right, so let's see. Let's do another one. Cecilia, do you want to read this one, this next one? Okay. All right. Sunset. When the air is clear, the sunset will appear yellow because the light from the sun has passed a long distance through air and the blue light has been scattered away. If the air is polluted with small particles, natural or otherwise the sunset will more will be more red sunsets of the sea may also be orange due to the salt particles in the air the sky around the sun is seen with a redder red reddened reddened as well as the light coming directly from the sun this is because all light is scattered relatively well through small angles, but blue light is then more likely to be scattered twice over the greater distance, leaving the yellow, red, and orange colors. Good. All right. So a little bit more science. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> All right. So as it is going the Big Bang Theory. Say that again? But you do like the Big Bang Theory. Me? Yes. Um, no. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't like any science. Maybe biology. I like to learn about animals. That's about, it. That's about the it. The sitcom. The sitcom. The Oh, the sitcom. Oh, no, I don't watch. I don't watch the Big Bang Theory. No, I don't. Um, my favorite, my favorite sitcom is, um, is Modern Family. Yes. Modern yes. Family. Oh, yes, it's very funny. <laughs> Alice, my cat. Um, yeah, Modern Family. I like Modern Family. I like um, The Middle. Um, there is a new one. I don't know if it's if it's where you guys uh, are at. It's called The Neighbors. Have you guys seen this show? No. No. no? Okay. Neither Is... middle. Sorry. Neither middle. You don't I see. I don't the... know middle. You don't I, know the middle I, either. No. No. Okay. No. Um. Yeah, and I love Last Man Standing. Last Man Standing rocks. I love that show. Um. The, the Neighbors is kind of a new show. It got really, really bad reviews when it first came out, but now it's getting a lot better reviews. It's, um, it's 
about a family that lives um, with a bunch of aliens in their neighborhood, but the aliens like have taken on human human form, and they all have um, like names of sports stars. Like the mom is Jackie Joyner Kersey, um, and uh, the kids. Oh gosh, um, I can't even think of it. But all of them, all of them have sports stars' names, and it's just it's really funny. It's um, it's really funny. It's on ABC. It's on ABC. So um, yeah. So um, Ismael, I'm originally from Arizona, but now I live in California. So. So, all right, but yeah, I've never, is the, is the Big Bang Theory, is that about aliens too? I've never even seen it. No. No? About Me neither. What's it about? About uh, people who, li who like science. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely no. <laughs> so. Uh, yes. so their favorite topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. So, um, but yeah, I'm excited because uh, tonight is uh, my shows. All my shows come on Modern Family in the middle and the neighbors. So, one Today's of my favorite programs about uh, the Whispers dog, uh, Cesar Millan. Oh, Cesar Milan. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, I the dog him. whisper. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. The dog yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. really yeah. Great. great. Another one, another good one if you like stuff like that is. Uh, Pitbulls and parolees. Ah, yes, yes. On Animal oh, Planet. Yeah. Lovely. I love that show. Love that Animal show. Planet. Yeah. Yeah. A good channel. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, let's get I back love to. Dogs. Yeah, me too. Let's get back to uh, sunsets, or we might forget what we read about. <laughs> <laughs> Lydia, not too. So many right. colors. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, as it is pointed out in the passage, the color of the sunset A may be lighter than expected due to salt particles in the air. B is red if the sky is clear. C owes its blueness to the distance between the sun and the earth. D is a combination of all the colors. E depends on the weather conditions and the location where it takes place. C. 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 Yes. C. 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 I've already forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> um, where are you guys getting from C? What sentence? Uh, the forest. I think the it's a uh, but blue light is then more likely to be scattered twice over the greater distance. Yes. yes. Okay. It it does say that the uh, because the light from the sun and the blue light has been scattered away. Away. Yes. So if it's been scattered away, do I mean, are, is there really blue in a sunset? No. 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 So it can't be C. I think it's D. Okay. Christoph thinks it's D. We know it's not B because because the, when the air is clear, the sunset will appear yellow. It not red. Yes. I think it's the weather conditions. Depends on the weather conditions. That's what I would say. I would go with E. Because it talks about sunsets over the sea. Um, it talks about air pollution, um, which is a uh, weather condition, I guess you could say. Um, I don't know. I, I'm kind of torn between D and E. Let's take a vote. Who yeah. says, what do you guys think? I vote the D. Christoph I says D. Think, yes, is D better? I, I think E. What do you think, Cecilia? 
I muddled up with colors. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Ismael, oh gosh, yeah, I think everybody, okay, let's see, we have a couple for E outside, Slim says D, Christoph says D, Jane, what do you think, D or E? E. E? <laughs> okay, uh, Ion, what do you think? E. You think E? e. All colors means to be green, uh, Yellow, brown, blue. and the mother. And, uh, okay, so, so you, so you guys say E. E. Yes. All right. We'll go with E. And Christoph gets ten points if we're wrong. <laughs> 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 All right. One can infer from the passage that the sunset looks yellow because scattering does not play an appreciable role in determining the color of the transmitted light. B, the blue light is scattered on the long way through the air at that time. C, the light coming directly from the sun is blue. D, the air is polluted to such a degree that the Earth's climate is actually changing. Or E, sunsets generally take place on the sea. B. B. Okay. As it is pointed out in the passage, our eyes are most, or excuse me, our eyes are more sensitive to light with blue frequencies. B, the red light passes easily through the air without scattering at all. C, when the sun sets, only the blue light is left. D, the sunset is likely to look orange when small particles such as salt from sea spray are in the air. Or E, by the time the light from a sunset gets to you, only red light remains. D. 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 Yes. 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 All right, let's see how we did. All right. <laughs> Good job, guys. Oh. That one was tricky. That one was tricky. Good job. All right. Um... Ian, would you like to read this passage for us on opera? Yeah. Opera. Opera refers to a dramatic art form originating in Europe in which the emotional content is conveyed to the audience as much through music, both vocal and instrumental, as it is through the lyrics. Through, through, by, through the lyrics. By contrast, in musical theater, an actor's dramatic performance is primary and the music plays a lesser role. The drama in opera is present, is present using the primary elements of theater so, such as scenery, costumes and acting. However, the orbs of the opera or libretto are sung rather than spoken. The singers are accompanied but, Accompanied, accompanied, uh -huh. accompanied by a musical ensemble ranging from a small instrumental ensemble to a full symphonic orchestra. Good. All right. All right. So it is pointing, excuse me, ugh, it is pointed <laughs> out in the reading that opera A has developed under the influence of musical theater. B is a drama sung with the accompaniment of an orchestra. C is not a high budget production. D is often performed in Europe. Or uh, E is the most complex of all the performing arts. B. I think it's B. B? Okay, we'll go with B. We can understand from the reading that A, people are captivated more by opera than musical theater. B, drama in opera is more important than the music. C, orchestras and operas can vary considerably in size. D, musical theater relies above all on music. Or E, there is argument over whether the music is important or the words in opera. It's gonna be B. B, B too, B too. 
I think it's, there is an argument over whether music is important or the words in it. Let's see. So we're, we because have a... It, it, because it speaks about a uh, libretto. Okay, it says, uh, however, the words of the opera or libretto are sung rather than spoken. No, if you, it, it, it's up to you. I'm only one and you are the majority. Okay, all right. I don't, the only thing I would say about that is that I, I'm not, I don't see how that, that is necessarily um, uh, an argument, that there, that there is an argument over whether the music is important. I think this is just simply pointing out in the passage that the words of the opera are sung rather than spoken, whereas in, um, uh, is in musical theater, um, there's, they're spoken rather than, than sung, so. Okay. Okay. But dra dramatic performance is primary and the music plays the second role. By contrast in musical, yes, it, yeah, that's what I'm saying. By contrast in musical theater, an actor's dramatic performance is primary and the music plays a lesser role. Yes. And yeah, so um, I don't know. What do you guys think? It suggests that it is B. B. B, yes. yes. B. I didn't see any argument in the paragraph. Okay. Um, drama yes. in <laughs> opera <laughs> is more important than the music? Yes, yes, yes. Drama is more important than the music. Dramatic performance is primary. <clears throat> Okay, you guys got to look at this though. By contrast, in musical theater, an actor's dramatic performance is primary. Not in opera, in musical theater. No. So is drama in opera more important than the music? No. No. We know that music. We know that musical theater does not rely above all on music. It relies more on drama, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, it does say that the drama in opera is presented using the primary elements of theater. However, everything is sung rather than spoken. The singers are accompanied by a musical ensemble ranging from a small instrumental ensemble to a full uh, symphonic orchestra. Is. So which one do you guys think it'll be? C. Okay. C. Yes. C. C. We can't mm. say that it's A because because the the passage doesn't say anything about what people are more captivated by. We know that drama in opera is not more important than the music. It's just it's vice versa. The music is more important than drama. We know that musical theater drama is more important than music. And there's no uh, suggestion that there is an argument, at least in this passage, about whether the music is important or the words. The only thing that we know specifically from the passage is that the orchestras can range significantly in size. Mm. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It is stated in the reading that A, acting and costumes are secondary to music in musical theater. B, many people find musical theater more captivating than opera. C, music in musical theater is not as important as it is in opera. D, an opera requires a huge orchestra as well as a large choir. Or E, opera doesn't have any properties in common with musical theater. It's A. I think C. C? Yes, it is C. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. Um, Jane, can you read about dolphins for me? She's gone. Oh, she's gone? Um, yes, yeah, she's gone. Oh, no. Mustafa, can you read about 
dolphins for me? Yes. Uh, dolphins are regarded as the friendliest uh, creatures in the sea and stories of uh, them helping drowning uh, solars have been common since Roman times. The more we learn about dolphins, the more we realize that their society is more complex than people previously imagined. They looked after uh, uh, they looked after other dolphins when they are ill, care for pregnant mothers and protect the weakest in the community. As we do, some scientists have suggested that dolphins has a language, but it is much more probable that they communicate with each other without needing words. Could any of these uh, mammals be more intelligent than man? Certainly, the most common argument in favor, favor of man's super, uh, super, superiority, superiority uh -huh. over them over them that we can kill them more easily than they can kill us in the least uh, satisfactory on the contrary, uh, contrary the more we discover about these remarkable uh, creatures the least we appear super, uh, superior when we destroy them yes i agree Yes. <laughs> All right. It I'm reading slowly because uh, the word's not clear. It's raining heavy here. <laughs> oh, that's okay. No worries. It is clear from the passage. You did a good job, Mustafa. It is clear from the passage that dolphins, A, don't want to be with us as much as we want to be with them. B, are proven to be less intelligent than once thought. C, have a reputation for being friendly to humans. D, are the most powerful creatures that live in the oceans, or E, are capable of learning a language and communicating with humans? C. 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 Yes, C. The fact that the writer of the passage thinks that we can kill dolphins more easily than they can kill us, A, means that they are better adapted to their environment, environment than we are. B, shows that dolphins have a very sophisticated form of communication. C proves that dolphins are not the most intelligent species at sea. D does not mean that we are superior to them. Or E proves that dolphins have linguistic skills far beyond what we pre previously thought. D. 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 Mm -hmm. One can infer from the reading that A, dolphins are quite abundant in some areas of the world. B, communication is the most fascinating aspect of the dolphins. C, dolphins have skills that no other living creatures have, such as the ability to, <laughs> such as, sorry, such as the ability to think. D, it is not usual for dolphins to communicate with each other. Or E, dolphins have some social traits that are similar to those of humans. E, 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 E. Who do I have in class? Uh, Slim, how are you? How are you? I'm fine, thanks. And you? Good. Do you want to read about the unsinkable ship? I will try. Okay. Okay. Naval architect never claim that a ship is unsinkable, but the sinking of the passenger and car feel Estonia in the Baltic surely should have never had happened. It was well designed and carefully maintained. It maintained. It carried the, the proper number of lifeboats. It had been thoroughly and thoroughly, uh -huh. th 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 I expected uh -huh. the day uh -huh. of its uh, fatal voyage. Yet, uh, hours later, the Estonia ruled over the sank in a cold, stormy night. It went down so quickly that most of those on board got in their, uh, in their dark 
loading uh, cabin uh, had the no chance to save themselves. Of those who now managed the scramble overboard, only 113 night survived. The rest died of uh, hypothermia before the skewers could uh, block them from the cold sea. The final death toll amounted uh, to 912 souls. However, there were an unpleasant number of questions about why the Estonian sank and why so many survivors were, were men in the prime of life. While most uh, of the dead were uh, women, children, and the elderly. 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 And good. Good. Thank you. All good. right. All right. Here we go. All right. So, one can understand from the reading that a, the life-saving equipment did not work well, and lifeboats could not be lowered. B. Design faults and incompetent crew contributed to the sinking of the Estonia ferry. C, 139 people managed to leave the vessel but died in freezing water. D, naval architects claimed that the Estonia was unsinkable. E, most victims were trapped inside the boat as they were in their cabins. C? No. No? E. Yes, E. It is clear from the passage that the survivors of the accident, A, helped one another to overcome the tragedy that had affected them all, B, were mostly young men, but women, children, and the elderly stood little chance, C, helped save hundreds of lives, D, are still suffering from severe post-traumatic stress disorder, or E told the investigators nothing about the accident? Team B. Yes. According to the passage, when the Estonia sank, there were only 139 passengers on board. B, few of the passengers were asleep. C, there were enough lifeboats for the number of people on board. D, faster reaction by the crew could have in increased the Estonia's chances of survival. Or E, all the passengers had already moved out into the open decks. C. C, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Remember, there was really, there was nothing wrong with this yeah. ship. The ship was in, it was in perfect condition. Um, I, I, yeah, so tragedy, absolute tragedy. Um, Is everybody? Oh, Lucas, Lucas, can you read the last passage for us yes, about erosion in America? Erosion in America. Erosion of America's uh, farmland by wind and water has been a problem since settlers first put the uh, prayers and uh, uh -huh. prayers and uh, grasslands under the plow in the 19th century. By the 1930s, more than uh, 282 million acres of uh, farmland were damaged by erosion. After 40 years of con uh, conservation efforts, soil erosion has accelerated due, due to new demands placed on, on the land by heavy crop production. In the years ahead, soil erosion and the pollution problems it causes are likely to replace petroleum uh, petroleum scarcity as the nation most critical natural resource problem. Good. All right. As we understand from the reading, today, soil erosion in America, A, causes humans to place new demands on the land, B, is worse than it was in the 19th century, C, happens so slowly that it is hardly noticed, D, is the most critical problem that the nation faces, 
E is worse in areas which have a lot of petroleum production. B. 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 Yes. Um. Yeah, I'll go with I'll go with you guys on that one. The author points out in the passage that erosion in America. A has damaged 282 million acres ever since settlers first put the prairies and grasslands under the under the plow. B has been so severe that it has forced people to abandon their settlements. C occurs only in areas with no vegetation. D can become a more serious problem in the future. Or E was on the decline before the 1930s. E? D. A. Let's see. Uh, by the 1930s, more than 282 acres of farmland were damaged. So that was by the 1930s. So it's probably safe to say that uh, it's been more since then. So we know, got to cross out A. Um, does the article say anything about being so severe that people have to abandon their settlements? No. 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 So B, we can uh, cross that off the list. Um, C occurs only in areas with no vegetation. Does the article say anything about that? No. No. Um, can become a more serious problem in the future. Yes. Yes. Yes, in the years ahead, soil erosion and the pollution problems it causes are likely to replace petroleum scarcity as the nation's most critical natural resource problem. Does the, the article does not say anything about uh, it being on the decline by the 1930s. So D is, is the one that we should go with. Does that make sense? Yes. 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 Okay. It is pointed out in the reading that in America... A, petroleum is causing heavy soil erosion and pollution, pollution problems. B, heavy crop production is necessary to meet the demands and to prevent a disaster. C, soil erosion has been hastened due to the overuse of farming lands. D, water is undoubtedly the largest cause of erosion. Or E, there are many ways to reduce erosion. C. C. Yes. All right, let's see how we did. Woohoo! <laughs> Good job, guys. All right, let me give you um, let me give you the link to this. Um, okay, here's the homepage for this resource. Um, I'll screen share just really quickly and show you where I got these from. So this is this is the home page. Um, I went to reading tests, mm -hmm. and if you click on reading tests, you'll see that um, that there there you have you, there will always be a reading of the day, and then there are a lot of different huh. reading. Yeah, there's a lot. There's 81 different ones that you can study. Mm -hmm. um, some other things that I pulled that we didn't get a chance to, to do today. Um, what did I pull? Um, oh, I pulled the paragraph completion. That's right. So um, you have other reading activities, dialogue completion, sentence completion, find the closest in meeting, identify the irrelevant sentence. Um, uh, this is paragraph completion where you insert what you think would be the best sentence for the blank. So, so they, also they also have a vocabulary, um, phrasal verb quizzes, if you guys mm -hmm. are interested in that. Um, all kind, uh, They have words of the day, um, all different kinds, synonyms, antonyms. So this is a really, really, really good resource for you guys. Hi, thanks for sharing it. No problem. No problem. no problem. no problem. No problem, guys. You're welcome. You're welcome.
Yeah. All right. Good job, guys. You got them all right. <laughs> we we get it. You're ready for the TOEFL. <laughs> oh, so fun. I prepared for the TOEFL. I take my exam after one month. Are you taking it in a month? Yes. Yeah.